Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at thin layer chromatography and RF values. Now in the exam what they normally ask you about are proteins. So what you would do is you would put a sample of proteins on the pencil line here and you would separate out the amino acids that can be found within that protein sample. Now thin layer chromatography has two different phases. We've got the stationary phase and the mobile phase. Now in the stationary phase, it uses a substance called silica gel. So on the pieces of almost card, if you like, that you are given to do your thin layer chromatography on, that has dried silica gel on it. And yes, you do need to know silica gel because I have seen that in the exam. Now with your sample here with chromatogram you've got to be really careful when you handle your thin layer chromatography because the you have amino acids on your hands and you don't want to contaminate your sample so it's really important that you wear gloves or you just handle at the edges you don't touch the main part of the chromatogram. So once you've drawn on your pencil line um, and you've put your dot of proteins on there, but you need to make sure that that protein sample is concentrated. So the way that you do that is you would put your sample on, you'd let it dry, you put your sample on again and you'd let it dry. And you normally do that about 10 times to make sure you've got a concentrated sample of protein there. Then once you've got that sample that's concentrated, you would then put your whole sample here within your solvent. Now, before we do that, we must make sure that our line here is drawn in pencil. Otherwise, it actually, if we did that in pen, it would dissolve into the solvent, which would be absolutely no good. And it would also cause our results to not be correct. So the mobile phase, what you do here is you place your sample in solvent and you allow the sample to run. So what will happen is the solvent will be absorbed by the thin layer chromatography and it will bring up your protein throughout the paper. Now what will happen here is it will cause your amino acids to separate as this happens. Now the solvent must be below the pencil line, otherwise the protein sample and the amino acids will dissolve straight into the solvent and you won't get the sample running up the chromatogram it'll all go into the solvent which is absolutely no good um, now how this works is that the lighter amino acids uh, will travel further up the chromatogram and this is because they have a smaller R group and there'll be less resistance between that amino acid and the chromatogram that silica gel that it's moving through so up here we'd have the lighter amino acids and down here we'd have the heavier amino acids with the larger R groups now, in order to see our amino acids, we must spray the chromatogram with ninhydrin. And ninhydrin dyes amino acids purple, so it allows you to see your amino acids in a lovely purple colour. Now, we need to be able to calculate an RF value. Um, so what you would do is, once your chromatogram's finished, you would draw up a line at the top there where your solvent got up to, and you would work out the, the different values of the RF by measuring to the end of the amino acid, which you put here at the top, and then the distance moved by the solvent, which is up, measuring up to that line there. Now you normally measure in millimeters. An RF value is like a ratio, so there's no units given here. But then what you would do is you would compare your RF value to known RF values. So for example, um, if you're more likely to be provided with a table that looks like this. And in that table, you, those are the known RF values. So say for example, you measured 0.3 as an RF value, you could then conclude that that amino acid was glycine. And that is pretty much everything that you need to know about thin layer chromatography and RF values. Good luck with your exams.